Okay, so we want to look at what happens with our common emitter amplifier when we add a source with some source resistance and a load on the end. So we can see here is our basic common emitter amplifier. So like we kind of showed before, this piece here is the common emitter part, and this part here is resistor biasing. Okay, and so the combination of these two things creates our common emitter amplifier. So we, we can kind of see that this whole thing right here is an amplifier. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to come in here and add on a source with a source resistance. And we're going to add on a load resistance. And the load resistance goes to ground right there. And then we can come just to make it look nice and clean. And we'll just move our output out here. OK, so what we want to be able to do is we want to do what we did before and use our amplifier model. So this part right here is going to get modeled by a input impedance, an output impedance, and a gain. So this is going to look like this. And then, once we have all of that, then I can come over here, and I can take this, and we're just going to take and connect this part to there, and we're going to come over here. And we're going to connect this part onto here. So you see we're going to model our amplifier with our ideal amplifier model, and then we're going to add our input side on and our output side on. So let's go over here and calculate all of these pieces. So we need to calculate the R in, the R out, and the gain, or the A. Okay. So let's start with the R in. So we're starting with this part right here. Okay. So the input is going to be this piece right here. So what we're doing is we're coming and we're just basically disconnecting that and finding the Thevenin equivalent right there. Okay, so in order to do this, we're not going to go to the small signal model this time. We're going to go to our equation sheet. And we see we have these three configurations, whether we're looking into the base looking into the collector or looking into the emitter. So if I go back to here, we are looking into the base. So I'm going to start with this and call this Thevenin 1. And that's looking into the base. So we go back to our little sheet here. And we see as long as my emitter is ground, and I look into the base, I see R pi. So my emitter is ground, so I'm just looking in here. So we see that Thevenin 1, well, let's call it R, Thevenin 1 is equal to R pi. So then if I come back here and look into here, now I'm going to already know that this part is R pi, and then I just have to add on the R1 and the R2. And we're looking for AC, so this one gets folded down. And so my R in is equal to R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R pi. OK, so now let's come in here. And now we're going to look at our R out, which is right here. 
So we can see that that's looking in here. So you see I'm kind of breaking this line and I'm trying to find the Thevenin equivalent scene looking in there. So what I'm going to really do is I'm going to say, oh, well, I have one part looking down and one part looking up. So let's start with the part looking up. Well, the part looking up, it just goes through RC to ground. So you see that's going to be my RC. That's the part looking up. Now the part looking down is into the transistor. We go back to our little sheet. And now we're looking into the collector. This one's ground. And we get an RO. So coming back here, we get this is an RO. And then that whole thing is going to be our R out. So our R out is equal to RC in parallel with RO. OK, so now we have the R in, we have the RO. Now we're just trying to find this gain. And so this is the gain without worrying about our RL and without worrying about our RS. So let's go back to our little sheet. And these are impedances. Uh, here's some more impedances. Okay, so now here is our gain. So you see we're looking at this configuration here with the emitter ground looking into my input and my output is connected over here. So here is my equation, minus GM RC in parallel with RO. Now the RO part is really part of the loading. So I really have GM RC. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say that my A is equal to minus GM times RC. So now I can take these three pieces, one, two, and three. And I plug them into this part here. Here is my 1, here is my 2, and here is my 3. And then once I have that, then I just have the loading on my input side and the loading on my output side. So now let's look at our, our full thing. So V out over V in is going to be equal to a voltage divider on my input side, which is my input loading. So I'm going to have R in. Oh, well, let's go ahead and plug it in. So in this case, our R in is equal to R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R pi over R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R pi plus our RS. Then we're going to have our gain, and we're just going to look at magnitude. So we're going to call this GMRC, and then we're going to have our output loading. So then we're going to have RL over RL plus the R out, which is RC in parallel with RO. So you see here that we can take into account our loading on the output. Let me label this. So this is called output loading. And this part here is input loading. So in, an, in a best case scenario, we would like our input loading and our output loading to be each be equal to 1. So therefore, I have my gain is just the same that there's no loading. So this is just my gain right here. But we have to take into account the input loading and the output loading by adding on a source resistance and adding on a load. And that is how we take into account source and load.